John Baker here from RotacRepair.ca. Behind me on the bench is a 912UL. Early in its life, apparently it was modified with high compression pistons being installed in it. This engine uses the Rotax ring mount, uh, which is a great engine mount. Uh, however, where it bolts on to the other half of the mount that goes with the airplane, there's a bar in the way behind the starter. So you have to take the engine pretty much right off to get the starter off. His friend, I guess, was gonna help him out, took the starter off and took it to a rebuild shop, put it back on, and there was no result. The engine would not crank over. Now, then they took the engine pretty much off again, which would be the second time around took the starter off it went apparently to another rebuilder and then the helper put the starter back on they reattached the engine they hooked everything all up and now the starter would run you could hear the starter going but the engine would not crank so that's when i got the call to come and look at it yes i can hear the starter running i have to assume at that point for whatever reason it's turning motion of the starter is not getting to the crankshaft to turn the engine over. The decision was made, let's just take the engine right off. It's only a little bit more work. I'm going to bring it back to the shop and I'm going to inspect it and find it once As you can see, I've taken the, uh, all the ignition off. Everything is exposed. There's a lot of wear on the teeth on the intermediate gear back in here and also on the starter shaft. So uh, that was the reason that I wanted to bring it back to the shop, see what's actually going on. So I have a uh, booster battery hooked up to the starter, which I have spaced on there, as it would be when it's operating on the airplane. So let's engage the starter and let's see what happens. Okay, did you notice what direction this, this the freewheeling gear was turning? All right, it's turning clockwise. The engine turns the other way. So, apparently, the starter is spinning backwards. What I did find the rebuilder had made the starter go the opposite direction. As I said, didn't see that one coming uh, and confirmed that there was not an issue inside the uh, back of the engine. The investigation begins. So I, uh, there is a, a test in the book called um, um, performance for smooth operation, I think is the name of it, in the maintenance manual, and scheduled maintenance. And it gives a specific maximum torque that it would take to rotate the propeller flange through the gearbox, through the crankshaft, and get a reading on it to find out why is this engine so tight that it won't turn over. Because it's not the starter. It says in there 110, 111 foot-pounds um, in, in old-fashioned in foot-pounds. Now, that a number there, that's like the wheel torque on a car. Seriously? I really uh, couldn't understand that that was potentially a good number. If it was that tight, I would think it would be totally seized and it would never even turn over. You probably couldn't turn the prop unless you were hanging off of it. So uh, I inquired to find out if that was a misprint in the book and apparently it's valid. I, I don't understand. Uh, I think it should have somewhere from maybe 10 to 15 uh, foot-pounds in it to, to, uh, to spin it over with the spark plugs out. Uh, at any rate, I started doing the testing. My fixture is mounted in place of the propeller and I have a telltale uh, torque wrench on it. So let's see how much torque it takes to turn the engine. Twenty-five pounds. Now realizing the spark plugs are not in the engine right now, so that seems excessively heavy to me. Let's try it somewhere in another spot. Let's reset back to zero again, and it turned there at about ten, which is what I would expect. So it's going under 90 degrees. We'll reset it back. And interesting, it's 
probably about 15 there I would think go back again and see what we get now oh very little there okay I would say that's around 15 so let's go another 90 degrees we'll re-zero that's about halfway there and let's re-zero again and oh, now she really comes up so now that I've turned it several times it uh, has, is increasing towards 25 pounds which is what the original reading was that I got so in some places I get a low reading and another part of the rotation I get a high reading. I took the oil filter apart, rinsed off the oil filter paper media uh, above this shop towel and I was using brake cleaner. The only place you're going to get that much copper from is from the uh, main bearings. So you can see how small they are and and uh, compared to my little teeny pointer here there's only one place that that much copper is going to come from which is going to be the main crankshaft bearings so does this have a fretted crankcase did it have some other issue that made it tighten up and partially seize to go to the uh, rebuilders and uh, at that point when their autopsy is complete then i'll know exactly what was wrong with it so for now thank you very much for watching John Baker here, Rotac Repair. Talk to you later.